Okay, everyone, very pleased today to have a great guest, Jackie Cumming, and it's Koski, right? It's Koski. You almost got it. You got it like 98% right. Good I job. I know, I know. <laughs> it made like Katonic. I should never mess anything up. I so, know. <laughs> so this is a road trip. Jackie is from Aiken. That's uh, right. She Born does not live here now, but she has a wonderful story. She's a financial planner, a financial educator. So Jackie, welcome to What's Shaking in Aiken. Thank you, Brian. Yes, this is my home. All of my family still live in Aiken. So I always hail that as that is my home and that's where I'm from. Right. So right. nice to be here. And so where did you grow up here in Aiken? I grew up in a little area called Petticoat Junction. I don't know if know. you've heard of that. Okay. So it's a... Kind of between New Ellington and Beach Island. So all my Petticoat Junction people, shout out. Um, so yeah, we had a little house. I remember it was a down this long dirt road, which I hated. Yeah. But uh, so we lived in the, the country part. And I don't know, back then, almost everything seemed like the country. But but that's where I grew up. Uh, I went to, uh, for elementary school, I did go to um, Millbrook. Remember that? In Aiken. For middle school in Aiken. For middle school, uh, moved us back to Jackson. Jackson Middle School, and then I graduated from uh, Silver Bluff High School, 1988. Okay. And then after Silver Bluff, what'd you do? After Silver Bluff, um, I did decide to go to college, and um, I ended up going to, now they've changed their name three times, but at the time it was Augusta College, then they changed their name to GRU, and now they changed it back to Augusta State, and then at some point it was Augusta University. I think right now it's Augusta University. So yeah, that's yeah. that's that's where I went to college. So so I spent so I still lived in Aiken, and I just drove to Augusta College every day. I was living with my brother Charles at the time. Everybody know Charles Cummins. Uh, he was the owner of uh, Triple C Sports, mm -hmm. but um, so I lived in actual it was New Ellington. And so it was only like about a 15 or 20 minute drive just across the bridge. And so I just went to school every day and I worked every day. I worked at Walmart in Aiken, which they're still there. They have a different location, but um, I mainly did office work, but, you know, it paid the bills, you know, getting through college. Um, so I stayed in this area um, all the way through college graduation. Now, what's impressive about you, Jackie, is you're not someone that came from a silver spoon uh, and, you know, just kept being successful. You came up from Pretty modest background, didn't you? Yeah, modest is probably the nice word. You know, we were <laughs> in poverty and it wasn't fun to talk about when you're a kid, you know, in high school that, you know, you're you're the poor kid. But um, I, you know, I was raised by a single dad with six kids. So wow. I don't know how he did it. You know, he he's my greatest hero and always will be. Uh, so we all lived in a, it. was a, Like I said, we lived down a dirt road, but it was a small Literally, I think we formally had two bedrooms, but we made it into a whole bunch more trying to get seven people in there. So, um, so yeah, we we um, we weren't on the only public assistance we were on was the free lunch program at school. So it was never on on welfare or food stamps or anything like that. And I think the reason for that is because my dad still worked his butt off. He worked a full time job. Um, I don't know if it's still around, but he worked at Graniteville Mill, and he always um, had a part-time job or did something like helping in construction. He was great with his hands and building things. So he was always working. And so his income was probably just above the cutoff for a lot of the public assistance. Um, but he was a proud man too. So that probably had something to do with it. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was tough growing up. And, um, you know, the thing that stuck with me was that, you know, I didn't want to be in poverty when I got older. So that was sort of the... Uh, sort of the motivation to go to college and to try to get a, a good job. You know, back then, you know, my dad told me everybody else as well is like, you know, you get a good job with good benefits um, so you can pay your bills. And that was the path. Right. So were you always interested in finance since that's what you do now or? No, I was, I was not interested in finance, Brian. I was, um, I was in to journalism and writing, and my major at Augusta College was broadcast journalism. I even okay. interned at Channel 6, and Channel 6 is still around. It's still around so I interned, yeah. I interned at Channel 6. I love that intern. But back then, you didn't have to pay your interns. So I didn't get paid for interning there. I mean, it was like a privilege. It was prestigious to, you know, be a, a intern reporter at Channel 6. So um, so I, so I was an intern 
and I wanted to be in broadcast journalism, writing and things like that. So honestly, my career took a detour again, just trying to get the good job. And I ended up, uh, my first move out of the um, Aiken Augusta area was uh, to Bentonville, Arkansas, uh, cause I was working at the Walmart in Aiken and I ended up getting a job, my first job out of college uh, in Bentonville, Arkansas at Walmart headquarters. So it was, it was in corporate communications, but honestly, if money was not the factor, I would have kept my job at channel six because yeah, yeah, I yeah. did start getting paid a little bit, but I moved all the way to Arkansas. And that was a, that was a really tough move because I moved away from everything that I, that I knew and it was corporate communications, but you know, throughout my career, I ended up being sort of in, you know, working for a global data company for over 20 years. And it wasn't really what I wanted to do. I didn't hate it, but it wasn't what I love to do. And throughout that process, somehow I discover the financial literacy stuff because I was getting financial financially literate myself. So my career had nothing to do with personal finance. I really wasn't into it growing up. I mean, it just wasn't something that was talked about. Right. So, you know, so I, yeah, I, this is kind of new, honestly, over the last 10 or 15 years. I, I've always thought, Jackie, and we'll talk about this later, that that, that you know, understand personal finance is such an important thing. And unless kids get it at home, they don't teach it at school. But we'll talk about it later. That's changing. So right. right. Um, so so eventually after doing your job for 20 years, did, is that when you stepped into the uh, finance sector at that point? Yeah. And while I was doing it, so um, probably one of the big um, pivot points for me was I, I got married when I was in Bentonville, Arkansas. Um, I, I had a daughter and then I was married for about 10 or 12 years and I ended up getting a divorce. And that was the moment that woke me up about my finances because there was this huge, you know, a lot of times, you know, we don't do anything different until something big happens, you know, right. or something goes wrong. So during my divorce, you know, basically what they do, well, you was an attorney. So, uh, you, you know, we were married for over 10 years. So basically uh, all the assets or all the money goes into one pot and you split it down the middle. And so really, we didn't have much of anything except, you know, the, the house was probably upside down. We had yeah, loans yeah. on the cars. So what was left was our 401ks. OK, so we had similar salaries and similar company matches. So I had twenty thousand dollars in my 401k and I'm in my mid 30s and I had no idea if that was good or what. But I had twenty thousand dollars and I'm like, hmm, seems OK. Well, my husband, he had $120,000 in his retirement account. So that's a huge disparity. And I felt very financially ignorant. I felt like, how on earth could this even happen? So, you know, when it was all said and done, you know, it, it all got taken care of in the court proceedings. But I'm like, you know what? I have to do something about this. I need to learn about my finances. I need to learn how money works. And it took me about two years to kind of wake up and 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 actually start doing something because, you know, uh, divorces are emotionally draining. So it took some time to kind of process all of that. And so that's when I said, you know what, I am going to do something. What am I really interested in? I was really interested in the stock market. Now, my, that may not have been the best way to start learning about your finances, but for me, that's what got me excited. Okay. And once I, yeah. And, and once I, you know, started learning about the stock market, I, I was very weary because, you know, there's a lot of, you know, trash out there when it comes to, you know, these yeah. great financial minds or whatever. So I ended up um, learning about an organization called Better Investing. It's nonprofit. And um, I joined that investment club to learn more about investing because the people were very smart. They were very approachable. They were willing to share and they were educators. So when I'm learning about all this, I'm backtracking. I'm like, well, I probably should know what my expenses are. I need to know my budget. I need to know what's going in, what's coming out. I need to be maxing out my 401k and my Roth IRA and my HSA because I learned you can invest in that. So all this personal finance stuff, you know, comes together because it's all interwoven. Mm -hmm. So when I went from becoming financially literate, getting financial educated and starting to really move the needle needle and understand some of this stuff. You know, what do we want to do as soon as we learn something? We want to teach it to our kids. And that was a, the impetus to uh, my first book, Money Letters to My Daughter. And I basically was putting in all the lessons I had learned about money and personal finance. And um, that got me into the financial stuff. How about that? So, so you want to share your message to your daughter so that she didn't wait till she was in her 30s to learn right. about it and, and know right away. 
Exactly. So, you know, yeah. to say, Jackie, practicing law, I did a lot of divorces. Your situation was so, you know, so similar to so many cases I heard, especially the female was like, I don't know what I have. I don't know what he has. I don't know what to invest. Right. I don't know. And and it's that that they, they may have a very good income, but as far as planning for the future, they had hardly anything. Uh, yeah, and I, and I think that was another big deal, like learning the difference between income and assets, a huge difference, because yeah. even if you make $300,000 a year, if you spend every penny, you probably don't have any assets because right. you haven't created, you haven't saved anything, you haven't invested anything. So all these little things, you know, started going off in my head and it was, it was really empowering. And of course I wanted my daughter to have that same feeling a lot sooner than I did. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I've always told my kids when you go into Walmart, speaking of Walmart and you have the greeters there and they're like, you know, 78 years old. I said, honey, they're not doing that because they like being on their feet 10 hours a day. They're doing that because they have to, they didn't plan for the right. future. So, okay. Right. So you wrote, so you wrote the book and then at that point, uh, did you continue working on the uh, financial education part? Oh, I absolutely did. And and it was the book that got me out of trying to do this personally for my daughter to doing it to a wider audience. Because once I wrote the book, I guess once you write a book, you know, people think you're an expert. Right, but yeah. I, I had a lot of schools asking me to come in and do a talk and teach the kids about financial education. So I'm like, oh, um, sure, I could do that. And 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 one of the, the big movements was as soon as I wrote the book, I ended up going coming back home to Aiken you know, got with my brother, you know, he's a big, tall guy. Yeah. And so we, he got me into every high school, not just in Aiken County, but Barnwell and in the whole area. So for a whole week, we were doing nothing but going to schools. And I was talking about financial education and I had my bodyguard brother being there <laughs> taking care of the bi discipline problems. <laughs> so I didn't have to worry about that, but um, I turned it into a presentation. And then I started um, doing a lot of fun things because I discovered one of the reasons why kids, young people especially, didn't get into money and personal finances because it was so boring, right? It was just not the most exciting topic. So I had to make it exciting. So yeah. I started giving away these $2 bills. You know, that was my first lesson about saving because I started saving uh, ever since I had uh, gotten my first job at Shoney's in Aiken and I was saving these $2 bills because I thought they were special and I continued collecting them and saving them until I was in my thirties and my daughter's like, how many $2 bills do you have? I had 1900 $2 bills. So that really? is $3,800. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. So I was like, I can't just give the, I can't just turn them in at the bank. I can't just blow them at the store. So I started every time I would do a financial literacy session, a workshop, training. If you got a good question, you got a $2 bill. If you answer one of my questions, you got a $2 bill. And the kids absolutely love that. Okay. So I had so much fun with them. All of them wanted me to come in. I enjoyed doing it. But my first thought, you know, after I got the book out and, and talking with my brother, because I don't know if I would have done this without him, but we um, hit all of the schools back in my hometown and my city. And so that was a big deal because more than anything, I want to help my community, the community that I came from, because there's so many other smart people just like me that might have grown up, you know, in my uh, under modest circumstances like I did that just need the exposure or a little something, or even the messenger to kind of talk about this stuff to maybe plant a seed and maybe get them to thinking, okay, you know, what can I do to start, you know, get my finances right? Right, right. You know, I, I've read so many stories, I'm sure you have too, about these professional athletes who make great money for the four or five yeah. years they play. And within yeah. three or four years, they're completely broke. And it, it really saddens me to see that. So yeah. if they would have had someone say, hey, put this aside, don't touch that, you know, and, and yeah, you have a little fun with, what you have, but you know, you, you don't want to be a brick mason after you are all pro tackle, you know, you just. You right. Know. Right. And the main reason for that is that they don't have those money skills. Right. And so all it takes is a slick salesman that sounds what he knows what he's talking about with some great sound bites 
and he's got them. So yeah. I at least want to try to equip people with some basic personal finance skills, you know, maybe even how to just look, look for red flags, how to, you know, look for a few things that are going to benefit you and to kind of have some basic understanding. But that's why it ends up happening is because they've never had that much money. They're not sure what to do. There's a lot of people in their ear saying, no, no, you should do this. This is the best thing. Oh no, do this. So, um, it, it's crazy how quickly that can happen. Right. So yeah. I'm sure most of my listeners know the dummy series of books. I've been writing dummies books for years, you know, dummies guide to your <laughs> iPhone, dummies guide or whatever. Yeah, well, yeah. Jackie has a brand new book and it's a dummies guide, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, Dummies has been around since the 1980s. Mainly, if, if anybody's in technology, they know those Dummies book really well because that's how the Four Dummies franchise started. It it was in the technology field. Right, right. And so, so what is your Dummies book you have? My Dummies book is right behind me. It's called Fire for Dummies. And Fire stands for Financial Independence, Retire Early. And it does what a Dummies guy does. It walks you through the basics and escalates you up and builds your knowledge until you are literally an expert by the time you get done, or at least on that particular um, topic. So that's what I've done with Five for Dummies. How about, so Jackie, how does that work? Like, do you like write and then reach out to dummies and say, hey, you might be interested or they reach out to you? How's that work? Yeah. So mine was a little different. Um, they Part of their job, the, you know, Four Dummies or Wiley is the major company that, um, the, the four dummies brand is underneath. So um, for mine was a little bit different. Um, I had a really good friend. She was also a, you know, financial planner and she was, um, I'm not even sure how she connected with them, but she was supposed to write a book called Wealth Building for Dummies. Okay. And she just didn't have the bandwidth to do it because she's building a, an amazing firm. And she sent me an email and she was like, hey, um, I told them I couldn't do it. So they asked me if I knew of anyone else. And I said, um, yeah, of course, I'd love to do it. And so I met with the acquisitions editor and she talked uh, talked to me a little bit about what to expect and what it's about to see if I was truly interested. So I did. And I had to fill out like 18 pages of all kinds of stuff, you know, my credentials, mm -hmm. um, my social media presence, the things that I've done, my education, all of that. So I send that to her and she gets back to me in about a week. She goes, well, everyone loved it, except we, it was supposed to be wealth building for dummies, right? And they wanted to change the title because they saw all the stuff I did around fire. And they said, we think we should change the name to fire for dummies. What do you think? And I said, I think that's amazing. I said, I'm just happy that they made the connection that a big part of fire is wealth building. Right. So fire for dummies was born. How about that? And that's been out yeah. how long? Uh, uh, it came out on April 30th of 2024 this year. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. So it's, it's really new. It's, it's, it's been doing, you know, outstanding. I've been very, very happy with it. My editors are happy. My brother's happy because he's been helping me <laughs> with so much stuff with it. So um, I, I, Honestly, when I was in the throes of writing it, I mean, I had to create everything from the outline to the, they have sort of the shell, but I am the expert. So I have to decide how it should be laid out, what the table of content should look like, all of that stuff. And, and honestly do most of the mo um, uh, marketing and promotion. Okay. So, um, so, and, and honestly, any major publisher, that's pretty much the case. So yeah. as a writer, I think when I was really young, I guess I thought that you know, if you work with the publisher, they do the marketing for you. Uh, no, the the biggest thing they contribute is their name and their distribution. So right. that has helped a lot. Right, right. So yeah. Jackie still loves giving back, especially to her hometown community. So you're going to be in Aiken in about a week or so, right? I will. I'm so excited to be coming home. And I usually come home, I don't know, maybe once a year. Um, it just depends. But um you know, again, just like my first book, you know, the first thing I'm thinking about is my community. And and to be honest with you, a lot of people, they've never heard of fire. A lot of people that I know, and I'm a part of the community. So obviously I know a lot about it, but I'm like, you know, there's a whole bunch of people that have never heard of it, don't know what it is. And I want to help break it down for them. I, I'm very, very transparent with my numbers. So I'll be sharing my real numbers. That's an unusual thing, especially good, in the yeah. financial world. But I'll be doing that all in the name of educating, 
and financial literacy, because sometimes you really do need to see some moving parts to see how you can make adjustments and how it would work for you. So yes, my um, one of my early thoughts when the book launched is, okay, when am I going back home? So I started talking with my brother and he pretty much knows everybody in Haken. Yeah. So we started going from there. I partnered up with Yamoja Village and we are going to have a huge, um, it's a community event. It's going to be at the Aiken Library. And the whole idea is to help share what, not only what I've learned, but financial education, what is financial independence and creating the um, option to retire early, breaking it down in a very friendly, fun way. We're going to do some giveaways. So it's going to be a really fun day and a fun event that I'm just really honored that I get to come back and do for my community. Right. And Jackie, I want to make sure I got right. It's Saturday, July 27th from noon to 2 p.m. at the library, correct? Yes, at the Aiken Public Library. And uh, we're we're going to have an awesome time. So, um, you know, come on out. Um, they can uh, register. Um, if they go to, again, I'm partnering with Emoja Village. So if you um, just go to emojavillage.com, okay. you just scroll down. You'll see uh, we are we're, we got a fun name for it. It's called Aiken Gets Financially Fit. Aiken and, Gets Financially Fit. So and, just... And, Go to Emoja Village, or you can find me on social media. You know, I'm connected with a lot of my friends and family uh, from the Aiken area. So uh, we'll be sharing on, you know, pay Facebook, Instagram. If you happen to be on LinkedIn, it'll be on there too. It'll be on YouTube, you know, with you, Brian. So uh, it'll be everywhere, but um, with the registration link. But we'd love for you to register. Let us know, um, you know, that you're going to come out. And, uh, and we're just going to make it a real fun day. It's the funnest, hopefully, that you'll have talking about money. Right, right. And folks, if you just simply type in Jackie Cummings and the last name K-O-S-K-I, I simply did that and the link came up. You can register right there. And and please register beforehand. That way they know how many chairs, how many people are going to be there. Uh, and and it, what's the charge for the event? Yeah, you know what? It is absolutely free. Wow. Because partnered with Donna um, uh, at, at Omoja Village, and we're offering this uh, for free to the community. This is our gift to the community. We will have books for sale. So um, you don't have to worry about getting it ahead of time. We'll have those available. I will be signing the books. And you know, Brian, I also got to uh, make sure I give up plenty of $2 bills. Exactly. So uh, they're, they're in these nice uh, plastic casing. Let me, let me see if I got one. Um, but yeah, you, you'll get a $2 bill that can serve as a bookmark. You, you can purchase um, a Fire for Dummies book. Um, it will be, will be signed by me. I'll be signing them that day. But um, so let's say I'm from South Carolina. I got some special South Carolina. Yeah, look at here. So I got some special South Carolina ones because you know our uh, Lady Gamecocks won the championship. They did. So they I'll be giving, yeah, I'll be giving some of those away. I I, I drop and sprinkle little two dollar bills wherever I go. So we'll have all of that going on. So come out and get your book, get it signed. If you happen to already have the book, bring the book and I'll sign it for you that day. And um, we'll have you know some refreshments. Uh, so we want to make it a really fun day for everyone that's coming out. There is no cost. We're doing this as our gift to the Aiken community. And we're really looking forward to it. It'll be on Saturday, uh, July 27th. Right. And Jackie also has a wonderful podcast talking all about fire. And Jackie, where can they find that podcast? Yeah. So I do a podcast for late starters because a lot of us are late starters because we didn't talk about money, but it's called Catching Up to Fi, F-I. Uh, which stands for financial independence. It's on every podcast player. So Apple Podcasts, Spotify. It's also on YouTube with the video version, or you can go to our website, uh, catchinguptify.com. Right. Well, Jackie, you are an inspirational woman. I mean, you <laughs> kind of came up off the deck, had nothing and have achieved greatness. And folks, mm -hmm. you should really get out and see her. Uh, she's a great woman. You're going to learn a lot and, you know, a, a free event on a Saturday is it's going to be boiling hot outside. So come on inside, have a great time. So Jackie, we're going to see you then on the 27th. All right, Brian, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to meeting you too when I'm in town. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right, guys, thanks so much.